Do you ever have that friend that you met and who just walked in with a lot of confidence and presence and you thought, wow, this person's really impressive. They're going to go places. I can't wait to see where those places go. And then you run into them a few years later and they look like they've been on drugs for a little while and they just look really tired and really beaten and they don't really know what they're saying. And you just wonder, wow, what happened? Okay, I get it. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know what shit you're dealing with uh, now, but I'm talking about Wonder Woman 84. <laughs> I'm like, just tired. Tired of this year. Oh, wait, no. It's a new year. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> now i just look it we're just, we're still tired <laughs> yeah we're never not tired <laughs> so um, anywho <laughs> we, we could whine like old men all day or we could talk about wonder woman uh, i'm still oh. too cold <laughs> I, have, I have three blankets on right now again i can't <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> fact that makes uh, me and I have a fan of... on, which is just so <laughs> like counterproductive. Um, God damn it, I'm not even 30. What the hell? <laughs> anyway, um, so Wonder Woman 84. It was a thing. It's a movie. It's I didn't hate it. Yeah, I it was really like it. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty so-so on this one. I think at best. I'd probably give it a six, but it's, I'm probably more just, I'm, I'm pretty on the fence because yeah. there are some elements I liked. There's some that like, they had an idea and then other things just like, what the hell is going on here? This, uh, every, like every crit critic I respect has also the same thing of like, what the fuck happened? And that's kind of what I was asking yeah. myself during this. Cause it's so, like, this went through multiple delays, rewrites, arguments over the screenplay, reshoots. Like, yeah, this it's this a felt hodgepodge and it feels it. And yeah, this is like the biggest mess, like in terms of like how things are presented since I would say Suicide Squad. It's nowhere near as bad. Don't get me. I'm, I'm not saying Suicide it's Squad still worse for sure. This like at least I, I this is a case where like, I felt like I had more to be mad about in Suicide Squad. Here I was just kind of bored. Uh, yeah and uh, it's not even like bad enough to be mad about uh i mean although yeah. some people are still getting mad about because angry penises are getting mad that women women have films um <laughs> and there's those people too um which also makes me conflicted it's like well i don't want to hate the movie because i don't want to give the angry penises something to talk about <laughs> uh, it's like when you don't like something you just gotta say you don't like it no matter how you line up with someone <laughs> But at the same time, I was like, yeah, this movie's a hodgepodge. This is just a mess of incoherent incoherent narratives. It doesn't really know what it wants to be. It's kind of all over the place. And the parts that are there are just repeating the beats from the first movie, like almost to a T. Yeah, I will give them credit, though. At least thematically speaking, it felt more consistent than the first movie did. I actually disagree. Uh, I, mean, I mean, what I'm... Because I will say, I felt like it didn't feel like it was jerking me around with what it was trying to say by the end of the movie. Because like the first movie, I made it clear. It went from, oh, Ares is doing this to, no, it's man's fault. To, oh, wait, no, it actually was Ares' fault. And we're actually all a bunch of people. And then it's just like, what are you trying to say? It's okay. like, you can't give me that message and then go back on it. Have you read it's, comics, sir? I have, but this is film. <laughs> Stick with the thematic elements, you cowards. <laughs> um, but this yeah. message is not approved by Werner Herzog. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see what you mean. Uh, that's fair. Yeah. That's a fair point. I think for me, it's more like, I don't even like. I get the message the movie is going for. They make it very, very overt, and I don't even mind like yeah. the, the elements or the colors and stuff like that. I was actually pretty okay with that kind of stuff. Uh, the older I've gotten, the less harsh I have been on like cheesiness and campiness. And I'm maybe just because I'm past that teenage uh, Christopher Nolan era comic book movie where like it has to be serious and dark, man. That's you know, it's a real movie <laughs> now. And it's like, yeah, give me Christopher Reeves. That's fun. It's fucking fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, 
and kind of, it kind of starts out that way. So I'm kind of like, I don't see what's so bad about this. Yeah, yeah it's a little cheesy, but it's bright. It's colorful. You know, it's, it's, go, it's going for that kind of campiness to it. I can get behind that. And then the Maxwell Lord stuff starts to put, uh, come into play. And that's where the movie pretty much starts falling apart because it kind of stops being Wonder Woman's movie. Um, yeah. Like thematic, like narratively speaking, this is much more Maxwell Lord's movie than it is uh, Wonder Woman's movie. He has the big character arc. He has the most development. Uh, oddly enough, for being like an obvious Trump stand-in at parts, it is kind of weird how he kind of takes over the movie uh, yeah. for a good chunk of it. Um, like he probably did the best. I, it, it's a, okay asterisk. So, some of the best work in that movie. And then there were times where he got a little, a little too over the top. Oh yeah, especially towards like the ver- the climax of the movie. Yeah, I was yeah. kind of like, oh my god, he's gone full cuckoo for Coco. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, like right, uh, like, you'll never stop me, Doctor Venture, kind of style. Yeah. yeah, it's like at the, the very least, he, he was clearly having fun. He was, and I like that yeah. actor. Uh, I think he's a good actor. I'm glad to see he's getting more screen presence lately. Uh, yeah. Sorry, my microphone's having issues. If there's any uh, ink seeing that, that's why. But. Uh, and, but so like I'm not saying it's he's a bad character or it's badly acted or anything like it. No, it's not. It's just more like it's it felt like it was it should have been more about Diana and it just kind of wasn't. Yeah. Um I yeah, I can I can see that. Um I still for me, it's like I thought she got an okay amount of time. I just thought they were kind of doing the whole, you know, Iron Man 3 thing with her, which I think was another complaint people had. No, my problem is like I don't even say Iron Man 3, I would say Iron Man 2 um like because it's like there's too many cooks in the kitchen there are too many plots yeah. competing with each other yeah uh, no, well i meant the whole idea where it's like it's less diana being wonder woman and more diana just being diana well it's not even about like how many times she appears as wonder woman it's just more like where she's at in the story and the narrative yeah. and that's that's more what i'm talking about yeah i can i can definitely agree with that though it's like in retrospect that yeah he actually did get more screen time now they think or at least it, Pretty or like the ratio was definitely kind of like it felt like the, in a weird the way. main crux of the story was much more on him than it was on Diana because like she's mostly focused on her subplot and this is in the show so I'm not giving anything away of um, her dealing with Chris Pine's penis um, <laughs> more, uh, more than the actual like anything else that's happening in the story um, and everything else kind of seems uh, tangential to that. So the point where it's like, she doesn't even have any real stakes in the story except for Chris Pine, which is like, okay, we did that in the first movie. So now we're just yeah. doing the exact, and even then she had more at stake in that movie. She had more drive. She had more autonomy. Um, yeah. Then this one, then it's all just about, oh, I missed my boyfriend. I know for two months, 40 years ago, uh, <laughs> which to yeah. me, I, like, I, she not can she not afford a therapist in those 40 years she looks like she did a pretty good job uh and that was another thing that was kind of weird because they're really pushing that down hard like her entire identity as a character surrounding chris pont uh, like the, the steve character to the point where it's like it's less like a relatable rela- like emotional arc and more just like this seems like a creepy fangirl who just will not let it go um yeah at the same time, I can't argue, like, when they're actually together on screen, they just, they work too damn well together. And it's just like, I mean, they're both good, like, they're both good actors. And they're both, like, well, they have good chemistry together on screen. It's more like, in yeah, thematically, it's just, I, I, I get it. It's, it's that whole fact where it's just like, <sighs> it should be pushing the characters forward, but instead they're staying in place. And that's the, uh, yeah. like, I feel like that's the main problem of this movie. Oh, my camera go out. Yep. Ah, God damn it, the stupid USB <laughs> on this <fucking> thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I get it because it feels more like it's just kind of, it's just them kind of like chilling around versus actually trying to accomplish anything. But meanwhile, like Maxwell Lord, he has this whole arc in the movie about him wanting everything and him finally getting the means to be everything, and then realize that not everything is important. By the way, if you can't see, if you consider the spoiler, I don't know what to fucking tell you. Yeah, uh, it's pretty <laughs> generic territory, actually. Uh, and yet, surprisingly convoluted. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I felt like they could have made a, the wish a lot simpler. Uh, that would have, like, gotten them to that point instead of going, like, I grant your wish, which means I grant your wish, which I grant everybody's wishes, which makes me more powerful, but simultaneously makes me sicker and weaker. Uh, and shit. It's just like, uh, you know, I feel like one wish could have solved all of this. 
Um, God, what else? Um, so like, no, like, but he by the, by the end, of, like, eh. even the movie kind of closes out on him completing his arc versus Diana, who just gets like a monologue at the like the climax to kind of tell you the moral of the story, and yeah. then she has like an epilogue scene, and that's kind of it. Um, like the only kind of thing she has is character growth, feel more like power ups more than character development. <laughs> And to be fair, those power ups felt more like MacGuffins half the time. Uh, like, like that's like that's kind of like Greek mythology and all that stuff. I, that yeah. I was okay with. Which is fair. I mean, it's more like, did you really need that? Did you really need that? What? It, it's more like in that in that sense that it's like it just it didn't really. To me, it felt less like she earned it like as a character, more like she bought the G.I. Joe accessories. That's to me yeah. more what it felt like. <laughs> like, oh, look, yeah. there's the invisible jet. Look, uh, she, uh, by the way, we're going to spoil the territory now, FYI. Yeah. Um, like, and, now she's like, now she can fly. Now she's got the cool armor that you can now buy at Target. Yeah, it felt like they, yeah, yeah that was another issue I had. It felt like a lot of the time they're kind of doing the Deus Ex Machina from Voltron thing. I don't know enough about Voltron, so I can't. Okay, think. there's a thing. <sighs> The show's fun, don't get me wrong, but an issue I had of that series was it felt like they kind of pulled powers out of their ass. Um, Wait, like we're talking about the new one them. or the old one? The new one. Okay, I was going to say, because like, if we're talking about the old one, that was every show back then. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the new one, where it's just like, it's like, I felt like you could have hinted at this earlier, like, oh, so, it's like, as you mentioned, the fact that suddenly she can she can make that jet turn invisible. Um, so, as you said, suddenly she can fly. Like, I mean, we know she can eventually, but there's no buildup to it. It just kind of happens. It's like, suddenly she can do that now. Okay, sure, whatever. Um, but it's more like... <laughs> and it's, sorry, it's also done into very bad green screen. Oh, and the, and the effects of the movie are not very good, which is kind of amazing. Yeah, it's like some of them, some of them are, but it, like the first movie... You can tell she's in front of a green screen because, like, she's not actually like running. For example, oh, it yeah. looks like she's just kind of like Weird standing and moving her arms in place, <laughs> <laughs> or when she's not actually waving, just kind of like floating there while she's flying. It's just like, oh god, no. yeah. No, there's some pretty awkward effects in this movie, uh, which yeah. and leads us to talk about the B plot of this. Well, the C D E F G plot, uh, <laughs> which is uh, Kristen Wiig's character, who's also in this. She, which will periodically remind you that she's in this, uh, and who plays yeah. uh, Cheetah, which is supposed to be like in the comics, it's supposed to be like Wonder Woman's like arch, ne like arch nemesis kind of thing. Um, the Sinestro to Green Lantern, the Joker to Batman kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but in this one, it's just <sighs> that was another case of one the when she does finally appear as cheetah towards the end it, it has kind of that look on it like guys we tried uh, <laughs> <laughs> for all of five seconds it's in the movie um and to the way they kind of frame her one falls into this very odd trope i have i'm starting to notice in like bad comic book m movies where they all have glasses they're all kind of weirdly uh, socially awkward and they all have a weird obsession with the hero that eventually leads into the motivation. Like I could not stop seeing Jamie Foxx's Electro whenever uh, she was starting out in this movie. Um, and there's like, I know there's other examples, other people point them out. I can't remember the top of my head, but it's enough to be a pattern where- uh, Catwoman and Batman Returns. Yes, Catwoman and Batman Returns. Um, I know there are other ones, but like yeah. it, it's enough to become a pattern at this point. It's like it yeah, just, exactly. it, it's a weird one. Um, yeah, and then um, the whole thing, like, and I'm not expecting them to adapt like the comic book version because the comic book version is kind of silly. Um, well, kind of. It's a it's a it's a killer woman that looks like a cat. Uh, <laughs> but uh, like the whole thing in the in the book is like she has like um, she's like sacrificed herself to like a god or something, which mm. turns into like the apex predator or something like that. Um, but at least if like, they tied in like the cat element more to the character, it would have made more sense. But the most we kind of get is she really liked D Diana's shoes one time. And <laughs> that was enough to go into full-blown cat fetish. Um, Apparently, yeah. Uh, and, it, and by the time you actually see her in the movie, um, they keep cutting to like, like, I, I guess they didn't have enough confidence in the effects of the first. Like, keep cutting to her face, but it's like this really bad face paint job. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just kind of like, oh, no, honey. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know you're trying, but, like, oh, yeah. this is such a mess. 
There's even a part like we know it where also... it's going. Uh, sorry, the last point uh, where Maxwell Lord, after uh, absorb, basically the whole plot of this movie is there's uh, this dream rock, uh, magic dreaming rock. Yeah, the wish stone. The wish stone, which uh, is actually in the comics is actually belong. I think his name is Morpheus, which is a dream from the Sandman series. Mm. Um, which is where it originally comes from. And this one, they they tied some obscure uh, Greek god. Um, but he's basically like, I want to be the dream stone. And then he becomes a dream stone. So now he can grant wishes and also choose what to take back, uh, take back, which is not a bad concept. Although it is very weird to hinge, hinge a big budget superhero movie on a magic wishing rock, <laughs> just as a general concept. Um, but uh, the, there is a point where he clearly like takes a lot out of him. So he's trying to find a way to like, do it on a mass scale so you can take other people's health while still doing all his wishing things. Um, and uh, he's in the plane after Cheetah, before she comes full Cheetah, just kicked Wonder Woman's ass in the White House, um, where they're sitting in a plane and um, he asks, like, I'll give you another wish. I'm feeling generous. And I wanted her to turn to him and go, have you seen cats? Make the butthole count a reality. <laughs> <laughs> I want a cat butthole. Wish granted. <laughs> oh God, what have oh, I done? It's too much cat. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then, and in return, you lose your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and in return, your face will be painted by a twelve-year-old <laughs> wannabe artist. Yeah. By the way, I just realized there's another. Well, okay. On the topic of cheetah, the other thing that bugged me was, as you mentioned. The fight's over in a freaking flash. Yeah. Like, and, and the way she's defeated is just really anticlimactic, too. Which which draws another comparison to Iron Man 2 in the fact that you get all this build up to this character with a whole movie's like, okay, this is going to be it. This is going to be the epic showdown. And then you get to it, it's over in two minutes. And you're like, yay? <laughs> Hooray? Yeah. The hero did the thing? Yeah, and more spoilers about how it's defeated basically it's a thing where it's just like you gotta stop fighting i won't stop fighting you okay grabs a piece of electric grabs like an electric cable and shocks the water that they're both in yeah that, that was kind of like weird to me because the whole thing of the saint uh they say like the only way to stop the wishing stone is to either renounce all your wishes um or uh kill maxwell lord now in the comic books she had no problem with that second option <laughs> yeah uh he didn't have the wishing stone but basically uh, he basically said uh, he was like controlling superman at the time and she had these last truth to say uh, like is there any way to stop him he's like the only way to stop him is to kill me and as soon as i come back i'm gonna do it again and she said okay snap <laughs> 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 um but in this one uh she's like no we can't do that which is fine superhero stuff i'm not i'm yeah. not bitching about that part but um, the part when he she, like the electric wire goes in the water and shocks both of them, I like th think I said out loud like, "Oh, you're okay with killing her." <laughs> <laughs> and then she's just okay. It's, it's like Trump stand in. Oh no, <laughs> we can't kill him. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, then it's just she's okay. She's just like stunned for a second, just suddenly can't do anything, and it's like, well, I guess so... that's it for Tita. All right, it's like really just a zap which hypothetically if you have the same godlike powers as wonder woman should shouldn't you have either a been resistant to that or b she should have suffered the same damage you did well she does have the like the magic mcguffin armor so i'm willing to like buy that as an explanation i thought she no she shed the armor at that point i thought she's she only shed the wings the rest of the armor is still there oh okay eh, i guess that's fair I mean, um, it's Wonder Woman, MacGuffin, Greek art, uh, Greek items. It's kind of part of it, so I'm not gonna like knock it down hard for that. Fair enough. But uh, either way, it's just it's, it, it's, like, it's like me bitching to Batman for using too many gadgets, you know? Yeah. Uh, either way, we're both in agreement. It was just a really lame way to take her out. And it's it just highlights the rest. Like the, the biggest problem the movie is like there there just isn't enough thematically or narratively to make up for the comic book pratfalls uh, like that would or you can ordinarily ignore in better products like this because let's face yeah. it like we've watched enough marvel movies to know they rely on MacGuffins all the goddamn time the infinity stones were a walking MacGuffin at every yeah. like conceivable turn but we were totally okay with that because there was enough stakes emotionally and physically that 
that took precedent over anything else. But here yeah. there's not a lot in terms of emotional stakes, at least not for Wonder Woman, except for, oh, I really miss Chris Pine's penis. And speaking of which, I got an issue with that too, with the way they handled it. Like on the one hand, it made sense that that was the way that the way they brought Chris Pine back was like, it made sense. Um, more spoilers. <laughs> the Wish basically put his soul in someone else's body. Yeah, the movie has no interest in addressing the ethical concerns about yeah, that. Yeah, or it's just like, so, so it's just like, you don't care that you took this person's life away and you see him again, he seems to actually be a pretty chill, nice guy. Or it's just nope, like, like, you, 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 <laughs> like, I was like, it's like, yeah, yeah, there's some, there's some ethical, there's some moral problems there. <laughs> and I'm willing to bet that was a rewrite and something Patty Jenkins probably got in an argument with the studio about. <laughs> Uh, because you can almost tell that was meant to be a bigger part of it at some point. Um, but it just kind of gets yeah. swept under the rug, probably by executives. Like, nah, it's too squishy. Let's just put that under. Um, yeah. and because at the same time, um, I I had a thought here, and I'm also wondering like how many of this was like how many of this was plans they were going to use to plant more seeds for the DCEU yeah. that they scrapped because of all the other failed attempts they had. Um, because it's still technically a prequel to Batman vs Superman if you really think about it. Um, yeah. Um, and, well, I guess it doesn't really matter anymore. They're going to do whatever the hell they want with it. Um, but my point to that is, is like a lot of these things that come up and that just kind of get dropped, and you're kind of wondering, like, are, are we not going to talk about this? And that was the big key element of it because uh, how he even finds out finds out is Gal Gadot, uh, Wonder Woman, is at a like a fundraiser trying to track down Maxwell Lord. And this guy shows up and like so says some stuff that Chris Pine said in the first movie, and she's like, "It is you." And then we see Chris Pine like leading for that part for the rest of the movie yeah and then they, they don't even mention the fact that he stole like they mentioned that he stole somebody else's body but not like hey doesn't that feel a little weird it's like oh that's cute you slept on a futon <laughs> you know? yeah it's like you know what this it's like no you know what this feels like a good body be in it's like okay asshole <laughs> and then uh and then later on like i like the next day after they presumably had sex they wake up and like we should probably find out why this happened shouldn't we like oh yeah we should do that <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, I really don't want to, but we have to. Like, I guess we got to figure out what the MacGuffin did. And that's what goes from there. And that's kind of what I mean, though. It's like, there, <laughs> um, it's just, it, there's no real emotional depth that we haven't seen before. This movie doesn't push the character further anywhere. Um, and, it, yeah. and it feels like the main character is sidelined in, fair, in favor of the Trump stand, which is such an irony to that. Um, and it's just, it just really disappointing and I hope Wonder yeah. Woman 3 which I guess is being fast tracked now gets a bit more creative freedom to actually do something with it yeah uh, this is another issue now that I had to think about it go for it um, so you know, as I said you know kind of the interesting idea with how they're taking Maxwell Lord the whole idea of you know his arc it wasn't really great but you know it was something um Anyone else find it weird that he got no punishment whatsoever, nor did Cheetah? Uh, well, that's what I mean when I said, like, he feels kind of like the main character. Because not only does he have this, yeah. this entire character arc, but he also, like, gets the happy ending afterwards. Yeah, it's like, it's like, I get, it's like, I'm sorry, son, I'll be a better father. Thanks, dad! Yeah, like, and, like, that's it. Like, yeah. again... And then that's I, that's what's weird to me about it too, and that's why I keep saying like it doesn't even feel like Diana is the main character in this yeah. movie. And they did the same thing with some. Well, I mean, neutral ending for Cheetah too, but once again, she didn't really get in trouble either. She just like turns back to normal. They just gotta leave it at that. And it's just like, well, she's a she's stuck in Russia apparently. So or not Russia, like some weird island in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> eh. So I don't know. They'll probably bring her back in some way or try to find some MacGuffin to make her the Cheetah again. I don't know. Yeah. We'll find well, out. Yeah, well, it's wherever Max Lord. Yeah, wherever Max Maxwell Lord, Lord Maxwell yeah. Lord was, it's you know where they were filling the thing. It's just like, yeah, that is kind of weird. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Again, I'm I'm wondering how many. Maybe they were afraid of like offending people because it is an obvious Trump stand-in. Um, maybe the whole idea was, oh, he know he has empathy now, so he's learned his lesson. He won't do the bad stuff again. Um, sure. Uh, whatever i don't know it doesn't matter nothing matters <laughs> i think my wife stole a fourth time now just gonna wash this out <laughs> um let me see what else uh the mid credit scene was kind of interesting it was a cute cameo you know? yeah 
Get so I'm back in there. So this is what I'm curious about is um, so other spoiler um, a certain, yeah, in terms of cameo, Linda Carter shows up um, as that, whoever they mentioned, you know, owned the armor before it's like, part of me is wondering like, so is that actually her? Is that multiverse wonder woman? I'm curious about what's going on here. <laughs> um, it's, Asteria was like a, like a god, uh, so it's yeah. more just to just lean to the demigod stuff while happening to make a cameo out of it. Yeah, I mean that's what I assume, but I don't know. I'd be curious to see what if they follow through with that in like the other movies or anything. I don't know. I'm I'm already a little worried about Mar- like the Marvel movies going into multi-dimensional stuff, and DC has fumbled every chance they've had to make something coherent out of this stuff. I'd be True. scared if they started doing multi- like the 50, the fifty two universes stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know that's kind of the plan that they're going for. Oh God, I kind of hope not. I mean, it's um, it's the fact that it's like we're already in a multiverse. The you know the thing with um, you know the Batman with Robert Pattinson supposed to be in its own universe. Uh, Joker was in its own universe. Yeah, and look how that turned out. <laughs> so far, my faith is not high. The only one I managed to do yeah. well so far is the goddamn CW shows. <laughs> Yeah, who would have thought? Which is like a fraction of their budget, and their stuff is already way better than the majority of their movies because yeah. they go like, "Yeah, comic books are silly. Let's lean into that," you know. <laughs> Rather than this one, yeah, like, that being said, yeah, we're serious. I'm still, ex- I am still excited for multiverse in Marvel though, just because freaking Sam Raimi's directing Doctor Strange, <laughs> and we'll see what's gonna happen with the Spider-Man movie because if the rumors are true on that, that's gonna be a hodgepodge. <laughs> we're gonna see. To be fair, then again, Spider Verse somehow pulled it off. So you also had Phil Lord working on that. <laughs> Very true. Um, which oh, is the man. only reason that worked, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah. And I don't know if you can make Lightning Strike twice, but if it happens, hey, I'll I'll still check it out. Um, All I know is that I cannot wait for Japanese Spider Man in Spider Verse Two. Oh my god, is that like that has not been confirmed to my knowledge? I know it's rumored, but it has not been confirmed. I yeah, I believe Lord said they're working on getting him in there. Uh, it would not surprise me. That depends on I'm sure it's your whole rights thing to that. I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. Um, I, I'm looking forward to that one. I love the first one, man. It's, they got Lord back for the second one, then cool. I'm down. Um, I think they did. It sounds better than the generic plan they're going for the sequel before <laughs> they sealed that deal. So I was like, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, I mean, like, if we're looking to DC movies, Shazam's still the best one. And also, oh, one thing I've got. Yes, 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 yes. Shazam is by far my favorite. Absolutely, like bar none. Um, like, it's not even close. I feel like Wonder Woman was number, was like number two, I think. Because I'm trying to remember what the good ones were. I think it was Wonder Woman. Yeah, then it was Wonder Birds Woman. Of Prey. Yeah, then Birds of Prey, then Aquaman, which uh, Aquaman, which was <laughs> unfortunately just kind of <laughs> meh for me. Oh, uh, Aquaman. <laughs> As is so fucking dumb. It is so goddamn dumb. And I cannot take anyone seriously that treats it as a serious movie because it's absolutely not. It's a lot of fun. It is a great spectacle of a movie, but you have to watch all these like great actors say the dumbest lines with a straight face and they just can't fucking do it. Um, Momoa can. Patrick Wilson, on the other hand. Momoa is having a great fucking time with this and like yeah. how much you enjoy him like at least he has like the charisma to kind of pull off more of what this movie tries to do which is throw a bunch of shit together in a blender and see what sticks uh, a lot of it is kept together by Momoa's chemistry Gal Gadot doesn't quite have that same weight which makes it a little distracting yeah. also just as I mentioned like the way that she acts in front of a green screen it you can tell it's not even the effects per se. It's She's just not very comfortable with it's it. It's the yeah, it's the way that she's physically acting does not mix with what is on there. Like Grant, we, it, it's not exactly an easy thing to do to go, you're flying through clouds. Act like you're flying through clouds. Good. You're going up. You're going down. Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm like, like, I'm I don't want to be too hard on Godot because I it's one of those cases I don't know if it's the actress of the material um like i want to give her a fair shake so it's really gonna be a case i'm gonna wait till like the next one when we can really say like do we have enough to determine who's at fault here uh oh i think he froze on me there you go mm. uh can you hear me okay yeah sorry you're oh i can hear you but you you're frozen in this it, like in this 
face. <laughs> I, I can't describe it. Um, um, I guess, yeah, I can hear you. It's just your camera's frozen. Yeah, it, it's better for me now. Uh, you were frozen for me, oh. too, to be fair. Um, there we go. Okay, so we're back. Yeah, on. I figured it was. Um, but yeah, so as one of those kids, like, I'm willing to give her, like, another chance in a movie to see, like, whose fault is it kind of a thing. Um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I want to be. I want to be. I like. I want to believe. I, I want to believe. Um, <laughs> oh, I oh, believe I... we're having some network issues. <laughs> oh no, I can still see and hear you. Okay. Okay. Um, as I will say this, um, at the very least, Godot is getting more and more comfortable. Like her acting in That's general true. is feeling a bit more natural as these movies have been going on. That's true. Yeah, that's completely fair. Because I felt like in the first movie, she would, or like Batman vs. Superman, she was a little... There. I'm not going to blame her on that. It's just the lines she had were just like god-awful. Um, Wonder Woman, on and off, sometimes she was comfortable, sometimes she was stiff. Um, I she Justice League... Charm, like, I thought she was very charming in the first movie compared to this one, but also the movie was a lot more about her. Even with the stiff She one, was. She had... Um, they're still like, but she's just such a wonderful person. That yeah, you get past the stiff moments. Uh, yeah, more, and then uh, I'd say uh, she really started kind of getting hurt. Oh, go ahead. Huh? That and then like in Justice League, that's when I felt like she was starting to real, like really get that natural flow. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Like that was when I felt like that's when she was first kind of like comfortable with it. Um, I, I get what you mean though, because like she definitely it's like. Like, because when she was likable in the first Wonder Woman, I mean, she, she just, yeah, as you mentioned, like when she was charming, she was charming as hell. Yeah, and, and like, like this is just, she seemed like just a really nice person who genuinely wanted to help. And that was kind of refreshing for the superhero genre at the time, where every backstory was, I'm heartbroken, yeah. and tragedy, and, and my dead, dead blank insert relative here. Uh, and uh, all this one was like, no, I just want to help people. You seem nice. I want to help you. And I was like, that was kind of refreshing for the time. Um, and there were parts of that that were still refreshing here. It just gets bogged down by a lot of unnecessary nonsense. Yeah. Um, also, with that in mind, having this movie be two and a half hours long, that, that, <laughs> yeah. uh, that, did not, that did not do it any favors. It did not. It was a stretch, to put it lightly. And now I'm very tired and I've spent a good chunk of my day on this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> I, I got nothing else. You got anything else? Not really. It's just, you know, I think we said it all. It's messy. It's just, yeah, it's just really messy. Yeah. Like it's, it's it could have been better. It should have been better. It wasn't. Yeah. Um, it's like, they, it's like, yeah, they this definitely felt like the sp like the Spider Man three of the DCEU. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm also wondering how much the A and T AT and T merger had to do with it too, because this was in production like right as that deal was taking place. All right. Um, so I'm wondering how much of like how much of that played into how the narrative turned out. I don't know. Uh, at this point, we're just kind of waiting for somebody to speak up and just kind of with the like with the Hobbit <laughs> and go. All right, guys, here's what happened. We're so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but by the way, guys, this is totally a, a apropos of nothing. Um, but if you ever get to like 30 minutes of time, watch the making of for The Hobbit 3 uh, Rise of the Third Army because it is a 30 minute apology for The Hobbit 3. And it's kind of amazing. <laughs> You're just like, yeah, we, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. We were just literally, we we're just taking it day by day. We didn't even have a complete script. And we just kind of like, um, okay, let's do this. And just like, look at poor Peter Jackson. Life faded from his eyes. <laughs> it's like, I just wanted to do two movies. <laughs> Why did they make me do a third? It must be three. <laughs> um, sorry, that, that's there's a there's a music there's a musical video on YouTube about like, about that. But anyway, <laughs> make a trilogy. <laughs> we must make some bank. <laughs> basically, that's basically what boiled down to. Um, but yeah, so that's Wonder Woman eighty four. Um, there are a lot of other movies to talk about this week, which we'll probably get to because there's a massive backlog. Things I need to watch, which so that's yeah. gonna be a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, I still need to watch uh, Trial of Chicago Seven. I really want to watch Soul. Um, I've watched it three times now, so <laughs> yeah. For the most part, I've heard it's like 
a really great movie and i cannot wait to see it um like critic i like put it best where they said uh, like if most pixar movies are movies are like meant to be deep for kids and enjoyable for adults this one's be like deep for adults and enjoyable for kids mm. So it's like Ben's like, oh, good, we're gonna delve into existential dread. Hmm. This might not be the way for me to start the new year off. <laughs> in a positive way. In a positive okay. way, you'll feel good when it's done. <laughs> yeah, I'm also trying to see if we can find Monster Hunter because I want to tear that movie a new one as a Monster Hunter fan. But alas, all we can do is pre-order it digitally, and I do not want to purchase that piece of crap. <laughs> Yeah. I know I haven't seen it and don't have the right to call it a piece of crap, but I know it's going to be a piece of crap. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have no context for Monster Hunter. I think I played um, when I was younger and then I got impatient. <laughs> which is fair. I didn't get back into I played the first game, then I didn't get back into it until 3 on the Wii U and 3DS. I think. I think I played a little bit as a kid and I got frustrated after it's been like three hours on and all I did was like cook a chicken leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Monster Hunter. <laughs> it's like I was promised hunting and I was promised monsters. I have seen neither. <laughs> yeah. I'm fighting a giant chicken. Uh, I know you call it a dragon, but it's a chicken. Mm-hmm. And there's um, like, there's so many fucking movies. Um, yeah, um, let me pull up the list because, eh, you guys will see when they, we talk about it. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, you got any final thoughts for one hundred eighty four? Um, if you got nothing better to do, it's not the worst thing to watch. Just there are plenty of better things you can spend your time with, though, and in a much shorter time frame. Watch Doom Patrol. That's like a better DC property. It's on HBO Max. <laughs> also Harley Quinn. <laughs> also Harley Quinn. <laughs> yeah. Um, which both got season threes. So hooray. <laughs> I still got to finish up um, Doom Patrol. I'm still in the middle of the first season. Uh, what part um, are you at? I don't, I, I can't remember. I just remember the, the, uh, the non, basically the non-binary city, Danny. Oh, Danny the Street. Love Danny the Street. Yeah, that, yeah, right. It was a street. So I either saw that was the last one or it was like one or two episodes after that. Gotcha. All right. Um, but yeah, so I think that's all we got. So talk guys later. Bye. <laughs>